Welcome to the F Word, the best food on telly. On the menu tonight, warm pigeon salad with toasted walnuts, roast skate with beetroot and parmesan, and pan perdue with caramelised peaches. Plus, Jonathan Ross invades my kitchen. This is like being on a generation game with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's full steam ahead in my search for Britain's tastiest scallops. No speed cameras here, is there? Fuck them. And Janet Street Porter proves she'll drink anything. And that is 100% pig's blood. I know you're a pensioner, but now you're a blood-sucking pensioner. <laughs> Please come in. Yes. Yes. Sir. All from up north. Yes. 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 Maz, what's on the menu? Pan roasted pigeon, breasted pigeon, on a on mushrooms, mushrooms, asparagus, and walnuts, walnuts salad and dressing. Right. Are yours that slow? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I have a fun to catch criminals going at that pace. <laughs> okay. Right. Starter. Let's do one together. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> right. What's the secret about cooking pigeon? Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Exactly. Yeah. Now they'll be marinated in thyme, garlic. Yeah. yeah. Pigeon in. Yeah? And that's the sort of noise you want to hear, yeah? yeah? Just that nice little sizzle. Mushrooms in, yeah? Yeah. Touch of shallots and a little touch of garlic in there, yes? Yeah. yeah. OK? Asparagus in. What's in the vinaigrette? Cherry vinegar. Good. Groundnut oil. Good. And walnut oil. Walnut oil. oil. Good. Sprinkle with chives. Right, pigeon out, yeah? That's just going to sit there and rest. Yeah. Salad, uh, rocket, some walnuts in there. Yeah. Plate. Mushrooms? Yeah. On. Some asparagus on. A little bit of salad on there. It's a warm salad. And then from the breast, turn it over so it's flat side down and just slice the breast. And then finally, we'll have a little bit of vinaigrette over the end. And look, bingo. Anything complicated there? No, no chef. No, no chef. chef. OK, first order. Come on, girls. OK, on order four covers table three, yes? Four pigeon salad, four skate, four pan perdue, yes? Yes, yes chef. chef! I like law and order in my kitchen. We all know each other through the police force. I love everything about food. I just, you know, love trying new things and don't get a bum this big without having a passion for food. We're used to uh, people being fiery with us, so if worse comes to the worst, we can always handcuff them to the cooker. Bring it on, Gordon. He's not even going to be able to swear. And if he does, it's public order. He's going down. We're going to sell 150 plates, no problem. Just be very, very careful when you're cooking these, yeah? They overcook in seconds, yeah? Very quickly, with your tongs out. Quickly, good. Good. Five, right, let's go. Out. Come on, Lise. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why did you join the police force? Well, my modelling career never took off, really, so... And you enjoy it? I do, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Full on. It's a rewarding job. Packed with emotion, no? Uh, yeah, Upsetting. it can be. I try and use cooking to get over that, so. Good. <laughs> Service, please. You happy with that, Maz? Yes, sir. Yeah? yeah? So am I. Table 12, let's go. Hey. How are you? Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Again, thank well? you for having me back. I'm very Good well. Good to see you. Is this in the way for the shot there? Yes. Shall I move <laughs> <that way? laughs> right, listen. Uh, well, uh, excuse me. How many have you got now? Three, four, if you count yeah, the one for uh, the show, three. which I do. Okay. <laughs> a month later, you said, Bassett, you're still carrying it around. Yeah, but okay. I had to pick it up today, and I said, I'll pick up Gordon's one. Yeah. And they went, which okay. one? I said, didn't Gordon uh, win for the uh, oh, You're an entertainer. You should be winning those. How many mission stars have you got? Seven. Yeah, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I bought them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good to see you again. Lovely to be here. Yes. Thank you for having me back. Um, we enjoyed our starter. The asparagus um, was nice. What about the pigeon? Pigeon's all right, but a pigeon belongs in Trafalgar Square. No, it doesn't. That's it just it. It's a woodland pigeon, Jonathan. You were quite a fussy eater. When you were a child, you were sort of... Well, when I was yeah. a child, you know what I would eat? Yeah. I would eat eggs. 
My Sorry. brothers called me Egg Boy, and I was in the top bunk as well. Imagine Seriously. what that was like before. <laughs> well, you must have had something more than sort of eggs, surely. Well, my mum was an OK cook, but, you know, we were... I'm not, you know, pleading poverty yeah. here, but we weren't a well-off yeah. family. So she'd sometimes Normal. do a casserole at the weekend, but it was just a big old bit of meat yeah. simmered, and she used to put a can of baked beans in there and anything she had available. Uh -huh. uh, and that was fine. All we used to have... I, I used to like chicken and chips when we had that occasionally. Yeah. You know, but it wasn't... We didn't have much else. We used to have a lot of food that yeah. you buy in stores. Like, I remember... You remember Vesta? Yeah, yeah. They used to make the kind of beef risotto. That was the most exotic food I ever had. Right, I want to talk to you about Fanny Craddock. Please do. Amazing woman. And, and this year we launched a campaign to help find a new Fanny Craddock. You're looking for your own Fanny, I understand that, and I applaud <laughs> that. But why not just yeah. do what Morecambe Wise used to do? Go a on. little bit of lippy, a long, long <laughs> weave, <laughs> hey, double bubble, you never know, you might win a BAFTA. <laughs> You're the woman with the man boobs. Feel, I, I've actually not really got man boobs. What I've got, though, is I'm carrying a lot of weight down there. Feel that. Feel that down there. Go on. No, feel that's that. a feel that down there. Feel no, that, that down that, there. That, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want a fanny. <laughs> hey. um, fanny Craddock. You were the very last person to actually interview. Yeah, I didn't realise that, and I hope I didn't and finish off. Did the interview go well? I can't really remember that much, so, I, so probably not. Should we have a little look at it? Uh, JB, uh, please. Let's have a look at this. So, this is you, back in 1987. Yeah. As... A skinny mini. Your show was the most successful cookery show ever, I think, probably. Yes. What do you think was the key to that success? That I could cook. <laughs> but I don't believe you had any formal training as a cook, did you? What do you call formal training for being a cook? <laughs> there aren't people like that on TV anymore. No. There really no, no, aren't. No. I mean, because you're actually sane, clearly, yep. and very good at what you do. What kind of advice would you give to any woman out there that's thinking of becoming the next sort of TV cook. What you're looking for, really, is some of the personality, but, but it's a difficult thing because you don't want someone to be false. Well, thousands of them have applied. Well, yeah. Have a quick look at this. Right, so this is, these are amateur fannies? Yeah, the amateur fannies. Ready? <laughs> All I don't know is that your dough should feel like a fat lady's ass. Perfect. Try with one hand. Why is she in a row? <laughs> she'd like me to blow. She wants to be like Jella. <laughs> yeah. In here, I've got about 100 grams of chickpea flour. And there you have one of the most delicious <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I won't show you my, my tits on TV, but I might show you my tattoos. See, look at that. It looks like she's wearing an egg on her head. It's a terrible <laughs> haircut. It's like her hair's on backwards. Straight in there now. I'm tempted to drink it myself, but no, we'll put it in the dish. I yeah. think she might be emotionally damaged. <laughs> I could see that they've all, they're all obviously quite confident. Yes. They've all got different things to work for them against yeah. them. They need to be strong, charismatic, and someone that's not going to melt under the pressure. You want to get one of those female uh, bodybuilders with the long clitorises? <laughs> I'll get your main course on today. <laughs> fuck it. Gordon! Hell. You're, You're fucking mad, I'll see you later. What? Holy shit. The pigeon was lovely, actually. I really like the asparagus with it, as well as the walnuts. Um, one of my friends had the same, obviously, pigeon. It was a bit more cooked, and it was a lot nicer. Right, results, ladies. Starters. OK, GB. OK, here we go. <clears throat> now, ladies, the number of customers that Paid like the lottery. For their starter, it's 34 out of 50. 34? 34. 34. Not bad. No Why so little? Um, undercooked. Undercooked? Oh, oh get out. I told you to wear. Pink is perfect. When it's brown, it's fun. I know. Don't go down. Yeah? No, Don't let not. it get to you. We're not. Bounce back. Yes? Yes. Honest stations. Let's go, ladies. Yes? Let's go. Up. Next on the menu. Never mind the scallops. Will my wetsuit stay dry? Why is it like this? When you get to this stage, you're always bursting for a pee. Time for the main course. Mouth-watering roast skate with beetroot and parmesan. That is 100% pig's blood. And I share a bloody awful drink with Janet Street Dracula. Oh, shit. It's fantastic. Welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course. Pan Roasted Skate Ring. Delicious, very, very sweet, easy to get hold of, and more importantly, very cheap. Pat dry, season, hot pan, olive oil. Butter. Now the fish has taken on a completely different colour. Baste. And that butter is on the verge of becoming a Benoisette, a nut brown butter. Beautiful. Slides off. Put it back. Leave that to rest for two minutes. Now the garnish. Lettuce. Salt. Pepper. Balsamic vinegar. 
olive oil, rosemary. 30 seconds. Hot pan, beetroot. And look at the glaze on that beetroot now. Capers, parmesan, parsley, vinaigrette. As the parmesan starts to melt, take it off. Literally 10 seconds in the pan. Out. And well, that beats spinach any day. And that has to be the perfect way of bringing skate back to life. Pan roasted skate with beetroot and parmesan. Done. Yes, Joe. Yeah, the skate's sticking. Yeah. Was the pan hot enough? Uh, because look, no. let me show you something. Look. Yeah, not enough colour. Come on. Okay. If it's boiling, you've got a completely different flavour. Oh, good. Sure. Yeah? Quite sure. thick, them, huh? Yeah, they're yes, no. big ones, then. We like a big one, don't we, love? Got to baste them. If you don't baste them, they're not going to cook on top. Yes? Beetroot in. Good. Nice. Right. Good, good, good. Watch when you place them in there. Watch. Careful, 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 careful. Woo! Oh, where's them fry your brigade when you need them? Watch your fingers, Lisa. Lisa, that's nice. Thank you. Beautiful colour. Yes, chef. Come on, Lisa. You're doing very well, Danny. Let's go. Yeah? Are you always looking this fucking miserable? Come on. <laughs> huh? Why is that? When I'm concentrating. When, you're concentrating. when I'm trying to work hard. You like this at work? I always look miserable. Good. Go, please. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Four more away, yeah? Here we go. It looks lovely. Thank you. Watch out. Here's the food snob with the big gob. In here is a food packed full of vitamin B12, iron and protein, which is produced in Britain, but unbelievably, almost nobody eats it. In fact, we waste 36 million tonnes of it a year, which is a dreadful shame. I'm going to get you all to eat blood. We should eat more of it, but us Brits find the thought of cooking with blood pretty hard to stomach. Now, that is something <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be putting past my lips. I think it's the thought of it that, that puts you off straight away. Hey, if you was going to tell me it was going to be good for you, I would, I, would, I would taste it, yeah, I would eat it. It does sound a bit sort of like Hammer House of Horror type of approach to cooking. No, it feels a little bit too devil-worshipping for me. I'm Actually. not a vampire, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It might be out of fashion, but protein-rich pig's blood has traditionally been used in cooking. I'm going to try some of the world's best blood recipes, so I'm here at this abattoir to source some prime, fresh ingredient. As in all abattoirs, the pigs are stunned before being bled. Is that my bucket? Okay. I'm taking my blood to renowned butcher David Lishman to learn how to make the classic British blood dish black pudding. Great, it's uh, very rare that we actually get fresh blood nowadays. After cooling for a couple of hours, the blood oxidises and turns brown. The blood is mixed with barley, oatmeal, pork fat and lots of herbs and spices and poured into a sausage machine. Are these bits of intestine then? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a kind of um, birth control device. Oh, my word. Lovely. This goes into the boiler yeah. now. Right. OK. For 45 minutes to an hour. Excellent. Blood. Nice, firm, mealy British black pudding. Yeah, it's cool. Right, I'll have a bit of that to take home. There's a lot more to cooking with blood than black pudding. Andy Holt is an enthusiastic blood chef who's collected recipes from all over the world. I'm here to learn how to cook his special Italian blood dessert. So we're just mixing the egg and the caster sugar together. What better way to popularise blood with the British than by appealing to our sweet tooth? And into that, we're adding melted chocolate. Just sounds like a chocolate mousse so <laughs> far. Yeah. And then the next thing we're putting in is the blood. Now, why on earth did the Italians dream up making a pudding using blood? In a way, it's a way to, to use up a valuable resource because the blood is actually very good for you. Obviously, it's full of iron, it's uh, full of vitamins. Wow, Andy, look at that. Superb. 
I'll taste I it. You, you absolutely promise me. I honestly it's promise you. It's not going to bring you. back memories, that squealing pig. Tastes exactly like chocolate mousse. Exactly. I'm now convinced that blood is not only good for you... It's delicious. Beautiful. ..but it's also tasty. All I've got to do now is persuade Gordon. Right, Gordon, what I want to do for you... Right. ..is Italian pancakes called Romantini. It's like a classic pancake mix, and instead of milk, you've got blood. I've never had a blood pancake, you know that. Are you OK? Yeah. Uh, no water, no milk? No, just no. blood. Get and this is bloody. all pig's blood? Bloody hell. And I'm... it's not something I donated earlier. No, jeez, look at that. It doesn't it's look that nice, does it? It actually looks like melted chocolate, so just yeah. get over it. OK, good God, oh, Jesus. Right, let it cook first before you flip it. You know how to make a so pancake. So, would you put inside a pancake, or do you actually serve them like that? I think, for the purposes of testing, i.e. Yeah. converting you, yeah. you should have nothing but a blood pancake. Oh, no! Do you know what that looks like? Go what on. I imagine your scrotum looks like. <laughs> looks a bit You're testicle like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, are we ready? Yeah, I am to the board. Look uh, at that. Just the smell of it, though. Uh, it actually smells like fried blood. It smells nice. It smells, smells nice. nice. Just taste what? It. It's very rubbery. Oh, stop huh? moaning. You can't taste the blood. Did you swallow that? Gordon! That is I've finally come good. up with something you won't eat. There's nothing, absolutely that nothing wrong with it's that. It's fucking disgusting. Janet. I don't have a problem with it. As I couldn't persuade you to eat the pancake, how about a shot of blood? <laughs> you're <laughs> turning blood. fucking... Hey, seriously, Cheers. you're... Cheers, Golden. And that is 100% pig's blood. Did you swallow that? You're possessed. Drink it. You put lead in your pencil. Oh, shit. It's fantastic. You, God, you've you're lost not it. the man I thought you were. Now, Janet, I know you're a pensioner, but now you're a blood-sucking pensioner. Janet, that is not nice. Fucking... Fucking vampire. No chance. Ah. Oh. I'm heading down the Dorset coast to go diving. It's one of my all-time favourite foods. Scallops. No speed cameras here, is there? Fuck them. I adore scallops. And I've served them on all my menus. But most of them are fished on a commercial scale, using dredging which can damage the seabed. The sustainable way to catch them is to go diving and pick them up by hand, which is what I'm going to do today. Hand dive scallop, especially, is something that is considered a bit of a jewel in the crown. Phenomenal. I'm off to meet Tom Whittle in Weymouth, who's been diving for scallops since he was 12. Have you got any shoes? Yeah, I've got some somewhere. Do you never wear them? <laughs> right, uh, temperature wise, what's it going to be like down there? 40 degrees if we're lucky. Yeah? Yeah. If we're lucky? Yeah. Serious. Jeez. And are they. Um... In abundance. It depends sort of where you go, but normally what you do is basically get down there, mm -hmm. and if there's tons, then you just work them. Yeah. And if there's none, then you just swim like fuck until you find them. That's bad. Good. Ready yeah, to go. Yeah, the dangly bits. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> We're heading out to the Black Hawk wreck, where we'll start our dive. Marine life congregates on wrecks, and nearby, there's an abundance of scallops. How big are they? Average size, probably about that here. Ready? About that. Because in um, London at the moment, uh, we're getting them from the south coast and the west coast, but uh, costing about £3.50, £4 each. Each? Each. And that's just like a commercial scallop thing. <laughs> The reason that hand dive scallops are so expensive is that they are incredibly hard to catch, and a diver will only pick up a fraction of the haul of a commercial fisherman. Um, they're difficult to see, aren't they? 
Yeah, yeah, they can be. I mean, especially uh, if they've buried themselves into the sand. But it's all about getting your eye into it. Yeah. Why is it like this? When you get to this stage, you're always bursting for a pee. It's, huh? it's the way that it huh? is. It's, it's the rule of the game. Unbelievable. I feel like that fucking condom again. <laughs> uh, what is it with these things? Visibility down here today is terrible, which makes spotting scallops that are nestled into the sand almost impossible. Right, beach time. Tom normally saves his scallops for supper, but I want to eat mine straight away. The fresher, the better. Right. Fantastic. They look amazing. I'm going to open them and clean them, yeah? So, a scallop tartare, yeah? Basically, a raw diced scallop mixed with lime, yeah? Chervil, and then a little bit of creme fraiche and mascarpone. Cheese, yeah? Mm. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Dive, open the scallop, and then eat. But look, I mean, they're still pulsating now. I feel them, they're still... It's extraordinary. Mix some creme fraiche with mascarpone cheese, lime zest, lime juice, some chervil, and salt and pepper. Right, dice the scallops. In. And all we do now is just fold that in there so exciting eating raw scallops. So I'm going to serve the scallop tartare inside the lettuce leaf. So just open up the heart of the baby gem lettuce. Quite a robust leaf, this, so it can take the scallop. Absolutely delicious. And there we are, a very simple scallop tartare. Fire away, buddy. Nice ah. one. Uh, Cheers. There you go. They are so tasty. Ah. Ten times better to use hand dive and not dredged. And I'd rather pay double for a hand dive, yeah, than cheap dredged scallops that taste of grit. Cheers. Cheers. Scallops away. First time I had skates, and the, the fish was great. So disappointing. And just greasy. The beetroot was gorgeous. It had little bits of cheese in, which gave a really unusual flavour. OK, go on, ladies. Results from the main course, right, yes? Come on, ladies. Matt, yes. how do you think you did? I thought you did all right. 29 out of 50. Oh, oh, nice. oh. Yes. What? Why? Uh, the one just been big reason, too greasy. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I, I personally felt you did a fucking good job. You can pull it back, yes, so come on, ladies. with the dessert, yes? Next on the menu, Sarah Cox reveals all in the recipe challenge. But instead, I asked the entire table if we could all have a gangbang. I give Olympic athletes a run for their money with my fast food. And Jonathan Ross files a police complaint. You want to suck my what? <laughs> I said you want Hold on, I'm being harassed. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time for another celebrity challenge, and it's time for me also to beat Sarah Cox. Confident? To meet me or beat me? Uh, beat you. Beat me, all right. Uh, nice to meet you. Yes, I am quite confident, yes. actually. That's your board there. Okay, bring Off it you on. go, madam. Good luck. Yes? Yes, good luck to you too, sir. 
So Sarah's making a chili con carne. I'm doing exactly the same. Minced beef, um, fresh oregano, um, paprika, sweet paprika, kidney beans, slightly pure in the garlic, so it's not so intense. And then finished with really nice vine tomato, so it gives that really nice sort of rich, dark, peppery flavour, but not too spicy. So for Sarah's chili special, <laughs> chopped onion, bit of chopped garlic, might chuck in a bit of red pepper, some uh, good beef here. I don't believe it's Hereford, but it is British beef. Good. Got a bit of tomato puree, might chuck in a bit of wine. Chopped tomatoes, kidney beans. I can it's like the bung in method, basically. I just bung it all in, do that, and then drink a bit of wine. Uh, and my secret ingredient, baked beans. Uh, you've got an amazing food background. Your father's a, a beef farmer in Bolton, is that right? He certainly is. He does it mainly for the breeding. Really? You know, I think uh -huh. he'll send one in when he's got a big farm bill. And so, does he have to have a collection of bull semen every other month? Well, he's got a good stock bull, and he, got, he imports them from Canada and that. Oh, really? He's got longer legs or something. So, you grew up eating lots of meat, yes? Well, yeah. Pigs, cows. Did you ever get attached to them? Yeah, I really did. I really did really? the piglets. Because, like, piglets. Charlotte's Web was all the rage, wasn't it? Now, I know it sounds like I need therapy from this story, but I did actually used to go to the, to the abattoir with my dad when he'd loaded all the pigs in. Oh, really? And I used to cry myself to sleep and then wake up when it was all over, you know, I never went into the abattoir, I don't no. think. No, but the nice thing about it, you understood exactly from an early age where meat yeah. comes from. Yeah, exactly. So I've got lambs in the back garden. The main <laughs> objective is to get the kids up to speed exactly, A, where it comes from, and B, I'm in that sort of yeah. debatable mood whether or not to take them to the abattoir and show them the final thing. Uh, I wouldn't. Be expensive, though, years of therapy that you have to pay for. Either that or they'll turn out to be fucking vegetarians, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, I can hear some noise in your pan. I'm happy. Huh? It's sizzling. That's it's sizzling. alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's in there. So you've got onions, garlic, yeah. beef in there. What else is in there? Uh, there's my fresh chilli in there. Uh -huh. I'm going to brown this beef off and then I'm going to whack in a glass of red wine and let that bubble away. I'm using uh, Liam Perrin. What's your secret ingredient? I've got a tin of baked beans. You're using what? A tin of baked beans. A tin of baked beans? Yeah. No. So, red wine with baked beans. I can't wait to taste it. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> The one thing I've always admired about you, you know that, mm. is you're a bit like me, you speak your mind. Yeah. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever said in your entire life? <laughs> oh, no, there was... My mum had taken out all the staff from her pub on the Christmas meal. I meant for us to go all go out and dance, but instead I asked the entire table if we could all have a gangbang. And everyone <laughs> just went completely <laughs> silent. And my mum just went ashen, and I didn't know what I meant. And I still, to this day, I kind of meant there's a word out there that isn't that. But at the ripe old age of 32 now, you're fully aware of what a gangbang is now, don't you? Well, yeah? Yeah, I mean, not from personal experience, obviously, but... <laughs> no, no, I, no. I no. learned quickly after, actually, what it was, and I was like, oh, right. I'm now going to add my uh, tomatoes. These big beef tomatoes are perfect. They're very juicy and they're full of flavour. So with tomatoes, is it fine to, to keep the skin on? Because I always want to put fresh tomato in and then I think, oh, do I have to dunk them in boiling water and get the skin off? For something like a chilli, something easy and straightforward like that, keeping the skin on is absolutely fine, you know that? Right, cool. You've got a great figure, you're very slim. Do you watch carefully what you eat or do you just sort of work out at the same time? I love food. Yep. I can be quite happily eating breakfast and I'll be planning what I want for lunch and what I want for dinner. You eat well? Yeah. I didn't. I used to model and I didn't eat well at all. I then. Yeah, I was like seven and a half stone. It was ridiculous. Serious. Like How my old knees were faster than my thighs. I was like 90. My I God. lived on like you know Marlboro lights and coffee. How long were you modelling for? Oh, a couple of years. I mean, you know, we're that successful. I still managed to fit in some shifts behind my mum's bar at the pub. You travelled across the world. Uh, modelled in yeah in Seoul in South Korea on two trips. Uh huh. Did they ever uh, try to make you eat a dog out there in terms of their... I did eat dog. I didn't did. know I'd eaten dog until I got to the joint of the bone and then yeah. I realised it wasn't chicken because it was kind of a different... Yeah, the structure. Bone. What did it taste of? It tasted just deep-fried meat, like yeah. kind of like chicken, yeah. really. So they both simmer now for 20 minutes, OK? Then the blind tasters will taste them and you'll lose. Huh? <laughs> Fast food doesn't have to mean baked beans. <laughs> I've run eight marathons, 26 long, hard miles each. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that eating right is just as important as the training. So you'd think that two super-fast athletes training for the Olympics would be eating a varied diet in between training. But they're not. And their excuse is they say they've got no time. We train in the morning for three or four hours, you know, maybe have half an hour for lunch, um, and then back again train in the afternoon. So it's uh, and that's six days a week, so it's a busy schedule. Lunchtime's a struggle because it's on the rush, it's on the go. 
and uh, it is just food for fuel. There's nothing interesting about it at all. All I eat is just a ready-made pasta pot. It's literally just pasta mixed with a bit of chicken, a bit of sauce. Just because we're training for the Olympics, we don't need anything special in particular. We just need to eat good amounts of the right stuff. I want to learn how to cook something nice, quick, tasty, and I want to be able to impress my girlfriend that I can actually cook. So I've come to meet best mates Chris and Andy to help them be as fast in the kitchen as they are on the track. Lightning. That looked bloody fast, yeah? Um, how many times a day do you train? Twice a day. Twice a day. Twice a day. Five days a week? Six days a week. Six days a week. I mean, that's extraordinary for one goal, an yeah. Olympic gold. That's yeah, the old right. It's the Olympics, though, isn't it? Yeah. Who's the fastest? Well, he won't deny it, it's me. <laughs> His personal best is better, but the last time we raced, Live TV. Yeah, you're gonna hit out. I took him out. I took him out. I took him out. Would you do me a favour? I will. Take me out. I'll, I'll I want to see you. just how fast you are. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you sure? 15 stone. <laughs> 40 enough. years of age. Yeah. <laughs> so go easy on the old man. Yes. I would. Good luck. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh yeah. shit. I, I felt like fucking Shrek going over there. You know that. <laughs> I'll try the sprinting, you know that? Sprinting's better. So it's all in the posture. posture. Yeah? Yeah. Sprinting's back. So, go! Up to all. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I wanted to say I beat two champions. Why is that? Don't fuck around. Come on, go. Don't fuck around. Don't fuck around. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just getting excited. <laughs> on your marts. Go! <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm fucked. <laughs> now, you just confirmed you're fast on the track. I'm going to show you how to be fast in the kitchen. Ready? Right. When you caught your breath. When I caught my breath, yeah. <laughs> right, time-wise lunch, you've got, what, half an hour? Half an hour, time. Max, yeah? yeah? Run me through a normal lunch. What did you have yesterday? Pasta pot. And that's it? That's it. A pasta pot? That's a pasta pot. I mean, it looks boring. It is boring. Yes. It so is you boring. must be <laughs> bored with it by now, no? Gordon, I am fed up with it. Pasta doesn't have to be boring, you know that? So I'm going to come up with three very exciting pasta dishes. We're going to be fast, furious, and delicious. First recipe, spaghetti, white tomato sauce, basil, chili, and finish with prawns. Pasta is the ultimate fast food, and something I eat when I'm training for the marathon. How would you find that good? How would you find the marathon? Yeah, no, it was tough. Yeah, very tough. In she goes. So, in the time it takes to cook that spaghetti, this sauce is ready. Yeah. It is chilly now. Andy, yeah. a little tip. Just give it a roll like that. Right. This releases the seeds so you can discard them easily. Andy, basil in, please. I mean, you yeah. guys eat well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to follow a strict diet, do you? No, everything in moderation. That's what, you know, that's what yeah. it's about. See, that's the perfect kind of food that, that we need. Right, recipe two, even faster, yeah? Concini pasta, pancetta, leeks and mushrooms. And if you can't get hold of pancetta, smoke bacon, it's absolutely fine. Chop the leeks finely and add to the bacon. I mean, the ultimate goal is um, a gold medal in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah, or London. London would be better. Or win one in Beijing and defend it in London. I mean, the chance yeah, of defending yeah, yeah. it in your hometown. Yeah. Oh, my. And your, your own country ho hosting the Olympics. After three minutes, add some creme fraiche, which lightens the dish. That's fast, isn't it? Add some grated parmesan and finish with chopped parsley. That's the kind of time scale that we're working on, so yeah. that's perfect. Recipe three. This one's with panne, chicken, goat's cheese, pine nuts and runner beans. Good. Runner beans in. Garlic. Pine nuts in. OK, rosemary on there, please, Chris. Take the ingredients out the pan and prepare the chicken. Chicken breast, I'm going to butterfly it, OK? That's to keep the knife nice and flat and just open it up. Cutting the chicken this way leaves the breast thinner and therefore it cooks quicker. Wow, that looks, that looks, that looks beautiful. That's a really so, nice dry ghost cheese. And at work, we keep them in the freezer and perfect for finishing pasta. It's a great tip because they never go off. This is not boring, is it? Oh, not, not at all. At all. No. We can't rely on time as an excuse to not look after yourselves. No. no. All three you happy with? Of course. Yeah. This one I like particularly. We've got the World Championship coming up. We have, yeah. At the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just hope the fun your times are faster <laughs> at the World Championship. <laughs> 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 Hello. 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 Hello.
Golden, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Well, it was fine. And one, one time all, when it all arrived, it was nice. Do you want our honest opinion, though? Of course I want your honest opinion. The you... cheese flavour overpowered the fish. If you must use the parmesan... Uh, next time. Great the fuck up, all uh, right? Oh. We don't want cubes of parmesan on there. Simple produce, yep. simply prepared. Are you going to pay for it? Yes. That's the most important. Not everyone happy? on the table is, but I will. Oh, my God. What, you're you not think? paying for them all? <laughs> you're telling me how it should be done. Yes, that's yeah. how it should be done. Fuck it. Come with me, yeah? Two seconds. Yeah? You, want, kitchen, you yeah? want a lesson? Yeah. Give, uh, absolute you definite, give... yes. Here we go. Let's go. Up. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Right, ladies, this is our Moni Diner. Cute. To make up, yeah, for these negativity, he's going to give us a hand with the dessert. Yes, let me get that one, yes. Why don't we cook it? Check it off. Right. Here we go. This is like something from, the, like, the new romantic period. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, you're going to have to help him. Right. Right. Ready? Does this turn you on? Huh? Jill, he needs locking up. Time for dessert, one of my favourites. Can you stop eating the fucking peaches, please, yeah? Pan do with caramelised peaches, basically posh eggy bread. And the secret behind this, of course, is using old bread. If you use old bread, it doesn't absorb all the nice egg mixture and it gets nice and crisp on the outside. Peaches. Hot pan. Sugar. The secret now is to get a little bit of colour on the peaches, but not getting the caramel too dark. Roast. Once we've got the colour on the peaches, then we're going to start adding the butter. Basil. Now, the basil just perfumes the caramel and just gives it this really nice, light, sweet, summery flavour. Out. The sauce for the pan perdu. A really nice, fresh, vibrant raspberry coulis. Sugar. Lemon. Straight on the mixer. Blitz. And then get the bottom of your ladle and just run that around. Sieve. Lovely. Eggy bread. It's very, very simple. Eggs. Vanilla. Smell. Absolutely delicious. Ice and sugar. Milk. Cream. Whisk. So we've got this really nice, sweetened, fresh vanilla custard. Mint. That's ready for the brioche. I'm going to cut lengthways. Nice, big, long slices. Hot pan. Bread in. And then back out. Not too long. Into the pan. Up and over. And it's literally done in seconds. Get my coolie down one side. Mint. Icing sugar. Pan perdu with caramelised peaches and raspberry coolie. Done. That is the perfect summer on a plate. Let's do one at a time and we'll do it together, yes? One is that, slice. Is that being on the generation game of my dad? Yes, that should be. Okay. Well, you know that, huh? In, nicely. Beautiful. Okay. Peaches in. That's it, you caramelise them in. Good. Good. Yeah, but they still right, ladies, let's go. Fuck. Oh, okay. OK, good. That's nice. Mine's ready, Chef. Yeah, right, good. On to the board, please. Right, Jonathan, you're going to do the bread. Yes. Yeah, the girl's going to do the well, peaches. So keep cooking. Yeah. Absolutely. I've just done no, one. No, no, hold on. We've got 49 more to do. Oh, Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of battle. If I wanted to work for a living. Just, just a little bit. I wouldn't have bought my bath to it. Right, ladies, let's go. Joe, keep that stone. It's hot in here, isn't it? Yeah. Jonathan, trust me, you've lost weight already. You've only been here. Now, well, this minutes. is easy. I thought, oh. I thought it was going to be difficult. Right, Lisa, that's too burnt there now, yeah? Damn. Oh, yes? Right, yeah. Not yeah. that. That's too Go dark on, there, yeah? Sure. Quick, go on in again. Okay. Jonathan, Thank keep you. it going, yes? Thank you, Gordon. Yes, Chef. Thank I don't you. mind saying yes, Chef, but saying hi, Lamsey, I draw the line at. <laughs> chef, I made a smiley <laughs> face with the butter in the pan. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so hot in there, isn't it, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> I've lost about three stones. Well, I think I found it. A little bit of cream on top, Maz. OK, that's done. Up. What are you happy with these? Yep. Are you happy with them? Yeah. Fresh basil on there? Fresh. Five, yes. Four. Service, please. Surely they've eaten enough out there, the greedy pigs, aren't they? I am so happy you're sweating. Last time we did that, you were interviewing Fanny Craddock. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're looking good, Lisa. You've perfected it now. Uh, hasn't she? Uh? Do you want us to come and cook yeah, for you? That's fine. I'll, I'll do, do, you six, to, yeah. do you want to suck okay, them one? No. <laughs> Well, hold on, I'm being harassed. So, <laughs> I said, do you want me to come and cook for you? Oh, no, come and cook for you. Oh, that's a far less interesting proposition. <laughs> now, we've got four more tables to send, yes? And we must have done 50 now. Come on. Come on, Jonathan, you're clapping. Your standards are going. I'm getting tired. Next to the menu, Sarah and I await the final verdict. How'd it go? 
uh, we, we went very well. My lamb Gavin says goodbye to his mum. <laughs> and Jonathan Ross joins the police lineup. This is a big moment. Bring it on, bring it on. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out who's won the recipe challenge and who's coxed it up. Oh, Ready? see what you did there. It's very good. Right, generous portion, yes, no skimping. And we'll plate it up, shall we? Okay. Rice is there. Yeah. Make a well in the middle, or you do. That's exactly. Now, feeling confident? Yeah. Do you serve sour cream? No, I don't. No? Right, you happy with that? Can I take this home and freeze it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, John Baptiste, please. Now, sour cream. <laughs> Spoon it on. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Sarah's? Gordon's. Good. Ali. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Very well, okay. thank you. Here we go. First dish. And dish number two. Bon Lovely. appétit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. It's nice thick sauce. It is. Mm. It's not too spicy though. It's quite sweet. It doesn't oh. actually taste like it's got that much chili in it. And honest. I think they're baked beans. Yeah, they do. Yeah, baked beans. That's, that's, what, you, that's what you can taste mm. in it. Sort of like earthy flavour. There's that in it. That tastes more like the tomatoes if they're bringing the flavour through. I detect quite a lot of salt in this. Uh, oh, no, right. <laughs> Don't look all smug <laughs> and arrogant and French cocky. How'd it go? Uh, we, we went very well. Very very well. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. It, it always goes well. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Gordon. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Christ almighty! Oh, dear! Well done. Well done. Yeah, no, uh, well done. Thank you. Do me a favour. Yeah. yeah. Fuck off out my okay, kitchen. Bye. Yeah? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, my Thank darling. You. I'm still no closer to finding out what happened to Charlotte. But I've now got to concentrate on getting Gavin back home. Farmer May has come to help me relocate him. Yeah, no problem. problem. What a fucking nightmare, right. though. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? Uh, I didn't expect but that at awful. all. Yeah, huh? it was awful. Well, I'm afraid you lose some in farming, I'm afraid. A quick look on uh, the three. You know, these don't look damaged at all, you know. They haven't got hold of these. So you're happy with their condition? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah they're, they're looking well. Gavin's not enough to feed 50 diners at Claridge's. So to keep him company and crucially give me enough meat for my restaurant, May's brought me two new lambs. Fuck it. At 13 weeks, Gavin is getting too old to keep suckling from his mother. So he has to be weaned or separated from the parent. Splitting up a lamb and its mother is a harsh reality of farming. So it's going to be a bit of a peculiar. Yeah, you can five yeah. minutes for him now. Yeah, he's, you know he's calling. They're calling for each other now. And then uh, we'll, we'll put those two to the trailer and yeah. we'll be going to the ways. May has taken the ewes back to Wales. Drive carefully, yes. Okay, good call. Take care. Thank you. And I'm taking the lambs to my garden in London, where Hugh Furley Whittingstall is waiting. You've now got the situation where these two new incomers, they're used to the Welsh hills. I'm not going to send them anywhere else. They're staying in my back garden. What you have to hope yeah. is that um, he's going to teach them... Yeah. ..how to stay calm. ..how to stay calm in suburbia. Welcome home. Listen, unfortunately, we've got some bad news to explain. Charlotte got eaten. Eaten by what? We don't know. It may be a dog or a wild cat. It's a white one. It means it was her cat. Listen, I'm not blaming your cat for eating them, OK? <laughs> no? Oh, dear. Thing. They seem to be settling down well. Huh? I think they're settling down all right. And I think the really encouraging thing is that they look like a trio already. That's a little flock you've got there. A nice little flock of three. Yeah. You can tell which one is the original. Very easy to identify. Look, Gavin's got the full tail. And the other two girls are... Not hard to tell them apart. No, it's you know. not hard at all. You know what we did last time I was here, when, yes. when, when Gavin was only small? Yes. We gave Charlotte and Gavin a, a hill. That's right. I think we've got to give them a bigger hill. Hugh's pulling out all the stops to make sure the lambs are as happy as possible in their final weeks. Over here, but Nice, that's a snug fit. Yeah. Not this bloody roof again. Is that the front? Could be. Yeah, Jack. Or is it the back? Sure. Let's get the grass on the roof. <laughs> Should end up with Utopia. Gordon, just for me, make a noise like oh, a sheep. Oh, 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 just say man. Get some more glass. Oh, just hang around. Just give me. There you go. Hey, guys, get down. That's tiny. Tiny. Check it out. Phase one. <laughs> that's your man, isn't it? Yeah, that's Gavin. Yeah, he's home. Do you still think I'm mad? <laughs> Later that evening, all three lambs finally reached the top of the mountain. How cool is that? Cute. Huh? Definitely. Cool. Are you not happy? What do you think? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, but you're not happy about your grass. 
Yeah. That will grow. Listen, grass will, will always grow. Yeah. And lamb is delicious. <laughs> That's the only thing you've got to think about tonight when you get back to bed. They'll hear yeah? you. Last tables, yes. Where to go? Jonathan, yes. Please. Right, six are the best yes. now, yes? yes? Six are the best. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Don't do that to me. Look. This is your table, this. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Raspberries, please. please. Pop. Nice. Ladies. Oh, well fun. done. That was fast. I've never seen you work so hard. Look at this. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let me get the jacket. Let me get the jacket. Can we get a discount for the meal now? Uh, he, he, listen, he didn't let you down, did he? No, uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't let you down. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Basil really complimented it. It's not something that I would think of putting with a dessert, but it was great. I loved it. Definitely pay for this. I'm definitely happy to get it as well. OK, GB, yes? Yeah. Come on. So, hey. ladies, for the starter, 34 out of 50, yeah? Yes, chef. Yeah? Pretty good, yeah? Not perfect, but not bad, yes? Main course, 29 out of 50, not good oh, enough. Yes. This, yes, is a big moment. Bring it on, bring it on. Come on. Ladies, for dessert, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Out of 50 diners, 48 have agreed to pay. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Oh, you got buns. Eva, Linda, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Bloody good work. You know that. Fucking good work. The total is, yeah, out of 150, is 111. I'm so sorry. Oh. You will not be coming back to Claridge. The second best so far. Oh, really? uh, fucking close, so yes? Yeah, we're well done, well done, well done. Decent recipe. You've earned the right to remain silent now. <laughs> Fuck off for a beer, yes? Well done. 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 Great. Joe, well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah? Hey, it was great fun. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do it again too. next week, uh, but don't put brilliant. fucking cheese on everything. What's wrong with you, eh? <laughs> Simple produce, simply prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Gallery. Get out. Out, out, out. On the menu next week, I turn Britain's ugliest fish into the tastiest dish. What size is that? That's casserole size, I call it. Bloody hell. Cat Dealey shows she's got bottle. One, two, three. Nice. <laughs> and it's the silence of the lambs as my flock make their final journey to the abattoir. I'm not very good when it comes to these kind of situations. Oh. Thank you for watching. Good night. Got something? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're after. Yeah. Now make sure you polish it. <laughs> and then he woke up and it was all a dream. <laughs> Good work. Thank you. Welcome to the F Word. I hope you're hungry. Yeah. On the menu tonight, there's tragic news about my flock. I'm absolutely fucking gobsmacked, and it was definitely Charlotte. I find out if Beatty Botham knows his celebrity plonk. <laughs> I can't believe you and Barry Manilow share the same nose. For fine wine. And I ride the Buffalo Rodeo in search of the perfect mozzarella. Fuck <laughs> me, how do we stop him? Oh, shit. Plus, three fantastic recipes everyone can cook at home. Broad bean and scallop risotto, roast pork chops with apple and radicchio, and cherry samosas. And our tonight's brigade, desperate enough... Bow chicka wow wow! ..to win the chance to cook at my Mayfair restaurant, Claridge's. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> so how are you, darling? Welcome. Yeah, nice right. Thank you. So. Bow chicka wow wow.
Oh. What the fuck was that? Oh, well, that was supposed to go... And yeah. rip your clothes off. Rip your clothes off. Holy shit. What is this? <laughs> the Spice Girl's gone wrong? No. Yeah. Yeah. Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. Yes. Yes. I do not want desperate diners this evening. You won't. Yeah? You won't. Now, 50 diners. Yeah. 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 I want them all to pay theirs. The dog's bottom oh, so God. far. They did bloody well, yeah? yeah? You can better that, yeah. but it's going to take a lot of concentration. Let's do the starter together, yes? Okay, yeah. Ready? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, good. A really nice, fresh, fragrant broad bean risotto with sauté scallops, finished with lemon zest and some really nice pea shoots, yeah? One cup, yeah? yeah? yeah Stock. Yeah. In. The rice has been cooked for yeah. two minutes, so we've just opened it up. The secret behind the risotto is mm. keeping it al dente, yeah? yeah? yeah. Broad bean puree. Mix it in. A little bit of parmesan cheese. Touch. Mascarpone cheese. No, what does the mascarpone yeah. do, Heather? Creaminess. That's right, gives it texture and yeah. makes really nice and velvety. Jackie. Yes. Have you ever cooked a scallop? No, I've never cooked a scallop. You've never cooked a scallop? I've never eaten a scallop either. Have you eaten a prawn? No. Holy shit. Why not? Chewy. Don't like the smell. You've had How food. do you know you've they're chewy food. if you've never eaten them, my darling? Just because I've seen other people sort of. Num, num, and just the look of it. Enough. Listen, scallops are one of the most delicious yeah. shellfish across the world. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fucking expensive to look after them. Yeah? Okay, okay. 30 seconds before those scallops come out, in goes my broad bean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Out and drain. Right, risotto, just nice and liquid. Right, okay. Yeah? Taste, madam. I'm sorry, but you can't cook it and not taste it. Now, what's rubbery and disgusting about that? Nothing. Touch of olive oil, just to glaze it gently on that olive oil, yeah? That's it. Let's go. Heather, that side. Jackie, that side, yeah? Hi, so, yeah, yeah. Jackie, Sweet just describe me the flavour of that scallop we just roasted there. Describe it to me. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was soft. Sweet. Melted in my mouth. Yeah. It was sweet, actually. Yeah. Very sweet. Delicious. Yeah, delicious, yeah. Next week, we'll go to a prawn, yes? Yeah. By yeah, September, yeah, yeah. we'd have got Not through every fish. fucking shellfish, yeah? <laughs> OK, good. So, on order, four covers table three, four risotto, four pork chop, four cherry samosas. Yes, yes chef. chef. Excellent. Yes. Right, so, uh, four portions. Yeah? Bigger pan. Yeah, bigger pan. There you go. Come on, Kate. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It should be on. Should be on the stove okay. already. Scallops in. Nice hot pan so the scallops don't boil. Yes, chef. <laughs> what do you think of that? Perfect. Beautiful. I think it's delicious. Let's go then. Come on. Follow me, ladies. I can't do it all on my own. That risotto is lovely, Sarah, yes? Yeah, Really, beautiful. really nice. Come on, work as a team. Good. Go, yeah, very nice. Let's go. Tonight's brigade is Jackie, Kay, Heather, Sarah, the desperate housewives. <laughs>
It doesn't look that big when it's on her, does it? She looks a lot smaller now. Unbelievable. Are you feeling nervous? Yeah. Oh. After watching them shear the first you, it was time to have a go myself. Put this leg in between your legs. In between my legs? <laughs> These boys shear 400 sheep a day. The pressure's on. You keep the teeth on the skin a bit flatter like that. Flatter. Then it goes like that. Fucking hell. But isn't that going to go into her? It shouldn't, no. There's hardly fucking anything left on her. No, oh, that's the idea. And all of that. The secret is to shear as close as possible to the skin without cutting the flesh. This keeps the fleece in one piece. My back's killing me. Yeah. I've got a fucking hole in mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this will make huh? socks, maybe, with it? <laughs> Low average. Charlotte and Gavin are too young to be shared. Their wool hasn't grown long enough yet. <laughs> it's amazing how big the lambs look now. We're just over five weeks to go. They need to be over 30 kilos. Really. I can't see any problem with that, can you? No, no, they should, they should be around the 35 kilos. Yeah. When they will be ready. Yeah, but they're in bloody good condition, aren't they? Mint oh, they condition. are, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take these home and start contemplating my jumpers. It's been a memorable day, but little did I know it was the last time I would see my lamb Charlotte alive. OK. Yes, Chef. The last table goes out, just like the first table, yes? Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. Just as important. Let's Made go. Nice, nicely. Go on. Right, you happy with those? Yeah. Yes? Service, please. Very nice, Dad. Yeah, table eight. Good. Go. Because risotto can be stodgy sometimes, but there was something slightly acidic which broke through it, and it was really good then with the scallops. It was really a bit on the al dente side for me, and I'm still kind of bring it out of my teeth now, so that was, for me, let the dish down completely. Right, results of the starter. Wait. Heather, how do you think we did? I'd hope, like to say 50. 50. Confident. Jackie? 40. 40. OK. I'm afraid... ..only 30 out of 50. Oh, Why, Sonny? Oh. Min is only in, uh, undercooked. Undercooked? Yeah. The risotto? Yeah. It has to have a little... Mm, yeah. Al dente. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, refuse to pay. Yeah. You're still in with a chance. Yes, yes. Chef. Yes, chef. The right. Lancashire Lassie's only got 33. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, pick yeah. it up, yeah? Let's, Let's go. go. Next on the menu, it's the battle of celebrity plongs with beefy both of them. Number two. Shocking, Shocking. it's shit. It's that shit. I wouldn't even put in my fucking bolognese. I joined busy mums on the school run. I always thought it was drop them off, pilates, back, glass of wine, but I'm sure we've all got nannies somewhere. Oh, no! And there's a death in my flock. Could it be the beast of Beckenham Palace? This is a possible wild cat on the loose. Welcome back to the F Word. Now it's time for the main course. Pork chop. Very nutritious, low in calories, very versatile. I'm going to roast it with sage, finish it with some Braeburn apple and radicchio. Perfect combination. This thick line of fat around the back. The most important thing now is just cutting through it, and it stops the pork chop from curling up. Season. Hot pan. Olive oil. It's really important to get the chop and roll it down the back of the pan. Get the outside layer of fat nice and crispy. Garlic. Butter. Base. Sage. The sage gets nice and crispy. Drain. Masala. That's going to glaze the pork chop. Just leave that to rest. Because pork is a very dense meat, we're going to serve Braeburn apple with radicchio. Chop. Leaving the skin on, protects the apple, and it doesn't disintegrate when it hits the pan. Radicchio. Olive oil. Apples in. Season. Thyme. And then, finally, the radicchio salad in there. Cider vinegar. And then just finish it off with a tablespoon of olive oil and make this wonderful, warm, sautéed salad with a cider vinaigrette inside. Take your pork, run it through its juices, and then just sit that beautiful chop on there and just cut that with a touch of olive oil. That is delicious. Who said pork boy? Pan roasted pork chop with a dishio, Braeburn apples. Done. 
So, courgettes, we'll serve two per portion, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Into the batter. It's a really nice way of eating courgettes. Courgettes are normally slightly bland. Nice and shallow fried like this with a tempura batter. Just makes nice and light and crisp. Gets rid of the water yeah. and makes the courgette, yeah, taste of something. Right, take them out of the oil. Nicely seasoned, yeah? Rock salt, shred away so it absorbs the salt. OK, plate out, please. Right, radicchio, apple, centre of the plate. Chop. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. On there, sit it on. Yes, sir. Yes? yes, sir. And Cross just yes. crisscross yes, sir. there. And then your sage leaf. Now, Jackie. Yes, sir. Please tell me yeah, that yes, you've sir. eaten a pork chop before. Yes, I have <laughs> eaten a pork chop. Yeah, yes. good. No bit of sauce. Yeah, one side of the pork chop. Touch of olive oil to cut the richness of the sauce. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Would you pay for that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right, are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Four pork chops away. Yeah, let's yes, go. Chef, chef. Treat. And Sarah. Do not forget to smile. Yes. My God. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. When we get the chops out, make sure they're all the same size. Why? Yes. So they cook yes. evenly. They cook together. evenly. That's yes, right. Melt okay. the butter, then in the oven. Two more. Be quick. Watch Come on. Out. Other way. Other way. Sorry. Come Sorry. on, ladies. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. I've got that. Right. Head. Yes. Jackie, you know that oil's not hot enough. Yes, you know, you're chef. a bright girl, and I don't need to tell right. you that. Are we yes, ready chef. to start the apple apple and medicine. Leave them to rest. They look fantastic. Yes, chef. Yes, right. Come here, Jackie. Leave that. Yes, chef. You've got to be together. Yes, chef. You're not desperate housewives, you're desperate. You know, yes, you're fucking yes, sucking yes, away. We're not Come on. We're She's dressed in her own, you'll stand there like that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Stir in the fucking pan. Yes, JB. It's, uh, it's raw. It's what? It's raw. It's raw? Yeah. Actually, the old table was pretty much raw. No, it is. It's undercooked. What table was that? Uh, that's table three. OK, Heather, come here. Look. It's nice to have it just under medium, but what yes. is that? Come on. That is raw. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, chef. Sorry, we'll get chef. On. Okay. Come so on, ladies. We're yes, chef. Yeah, we do that whole table again. Yes. yes. Now, touch that. Come here. Come on. Yes, chef. Touch that. Now, no, chef. Do they raw? Yes or no? Yes, they're chef. raw. Oh. Look, they're okay, raw. Chef. Back, back, in. In. back in. Back in. Yes, chef. Everybody's just starting to nod off a little bit. Yes. No, yes, chef. If you've got yes, any chef. hope in hell yes, chef. of coming to Clarys and cooking, you've got to pick up the pace. Yes, chef. Yeah. Yes, chef. Seriously. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. I believe anyone can cook great food fast, and I mean anyone. Let's go. Well, as a mum, you start at a certain point in the morning and you cannot stop. George, come down, please. It's time for cricket. Come on, Harry. It's time to go football. Got your coat. Let's go. You can't suddenly go up at half past five. That's it. Grab my coat and I'll leave. Molly, can you come down, please? It never stops. Running this household is just the busiest job in the world, I think. Sometimes food's just the lowest priority of the day. It's just to get fuel in them and let's go. This is a bit more greater. Well, at the moment, I feel that um, they're getting the wrong food because... That's lovely, darling. That's brilliant. Don't put it all by the front door for me. There's a good girl. I really love cooking and I love cooking from scratch, but I don't have the time to do it. I believe everyone has the time to cook. So I've come to spend the day with Sally to show how she can cook delicious and healthy fast food, even with her busy schedule. So, busy mum of four. Very. Yeah, I know how you feel because we've got four kids yes. as well. What are you cooking at the moment for the kids? Um, the odd frozen pizza. Right, well, that's not actually cooking for nuggets. them, is it? Chicken nuggets. <laughs> what are you personally cooking? I'm um, not saying you're a bad mum. You're a busy mum. No, no, mum. no. Yeah, no, no. I know. I, I mean, uh, on the weekend, I will make yep. my roast dinner. Of course, I will. When yep. I've got the time and the energy. But Good. otherwise, in the week, it's quick, fast. Convenience. Convenience food. What's What's next on your list this time? I've now? got loads of jobs. So you can come and help me, actually. Just loads of different. It's not easy, is it? I've got no, it's not. See, I've got loads of old ones. So the other half of these may yeah, be in there. somewhere in there. My bed's made here. Yes. Yes. Uh, next. So another load going in. This must be on yes. constant, this one. It is yeah. on probably about, I'd say, about three times a day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I God I cook for a living, you know that. Because when Tana sees yeah. what I've just done, I'm, I'm in trouble. Um, just on what I've seen, you know, you are one hell of a busy mum, you know that? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, you've got everything so well coordinated. The only thing you haven't got right yes. is the food, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to come up with a dish that will be done in two parts. I'm going to start it, mm -hmm. stop it, go off, pick up the kids, come back and finish it. Perfect. Got right. to get... Got to get the kids in 15 minutes. I've got okay. the boys. So we'll be cooking a fast and delicious leek and smoked haddock risotto. Right. Everyone thinks a risotto is about standing over a pan for 45 minutes. Okay. But with this fast risotto, you parboil the rice in stock for four minutes to speed up the cooking later. The reason why I kept the garlic whole, kids you know, don't like garlic. All it does is flavour it. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to take the garlic out. 
And what type of rice was it? Arborio rice. That basically there is okay. one portion. Paddock. As that comes up to the boil, you just take it off. And okay. it just sits there in its milk. Just turn it off. After four minutes, spread the rice on a tray to cool down. That's really good. Now, if the kids saw that, they wouldn't eat yeah, that. Yeah, no, not in a yeah. million years. But the fact that we flavoured the rice... It's got a bit got of a nice little, they yeah, say. That's exactly what they'll say. <laughs> I don't want twigs in my risotto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to come with you and pick up the kids, Brilliant. just to show you how easy this is. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rosie. That's nice. That's ticklish. <laughs> Next stop, picking up George and Harry, and a chance to meet some of the other mums at the school gates. Something I don't get the chance to do every day. So, hectic as well in terms of trying to find time to cook in amongst yes. a manic schedule. I've got three children. Yeah. And I have to feed them, and then my husband works really late hours, exactly. so then oh, I have to feed, yeah. Yeah. feed him again. Like what we yeah. Were saying, yeah. Yeah. So you've got the same problem Sally's so it's got. Like a cafe. You just find it, and you're difficult to cook in amongst yeah. the, everything else you've got to do. I always thought it was drop them off, Pilates, back, glass of wine. But that's what, what my husband says. That's what my that's husband says. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But I'm sure we've all got nannies somewhere. Oh, no! So, with the kids picked up, it's back to the house. What about homework? I don't like homework. Oh, kick it. And there's only 30 oh. minutes before Sally has to take George to football practice. Time to get cooking. Right, stage two. The rice is part boiled and the haddock's cooked. So, this stage is about bringing the ingredients together quickly. I like the fact that I've come in now and I'm halfway yeah. there already. Hello, sorry. You just get that. Hello, Hello mate. It's something they're not used to eating, leeks. So I'm going to cut them up really small yeah. so they don't get to see them. <laughs> Where the rice goes in now, a couple of minutes. Hi, oh, dear. What's the matter, darling? Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, dear. We're using the milk that we poached the haddock in earlier for a really flavoursome stock. So what happens after dinner? Swimming, trying to get reading or homework done. So it's still full on, isn't it? It's still oh. full on, probably, till about... It'll be gone 8 o'clock. A spoonful of mascarpone cheese will give a lovely creamy taste that the kids will love. What do you think the kids will think? That is gorgeous. Now, this is the spinach. Now it's going to need about another three or four minutes. Is that all? It's tailor-made for your busy day. Yeah, definitely. No, oh. this is perfect. Time for the haddock. Dad's on his way home to look after the kids before Sally takes George to football. Time to dish up. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm very well. That's oh. for you, my man. Thank you very much. Susan. Hello, sweetheart. Hi. Do you have a good Hello. day? Are you ready for some risotto? Check this out. It this. Smells it smells, it smells nice. nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Molly, what do you think, my darling? It's so brilliant. Nice. Mm. You like it, Harry? Harry. Mmm. Mm. Yummy. Yummy? To have something nice and sweet and easy like this is fantastic. I hope you're going to keep it up. Yes, definitely. Promise me? I promise. Yes. Oh. Um, I would seriously stay behind and help you, you know, but to be honest, I think going back to my own restaurant tonight will be a lot easier. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Come on, ladies, please. Gordon? Yes. Yeah, What's the matter? Yeah, and there's a one. Oh, no. Oh, come yeah, on. it is from Tibble 11. Okay. How come they've eaten half of it? It's not raw. Sorry, come on. That's perfect. Yeah. You weren't very happy? No, I mean, I thought it was too raw. Sorry. 30 years ago, you know, I think you've got a valid point yes, because yeah. everyone thinks pork's got to be cooked to hell out of to become tasty. Right, yeah. That, I'm really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> huh? It's it, it, cooked perfectly. What did you do for a living? Yeah, just out of interest. Stay tuned. Cool, fuck it now. I know more than anyone in Britain today yeah. that fucking estate agents cannot cook. <laughs> so I wouldn't expect you to understand how that's cooked perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Holy mackerel. <laughs> fuck me. I'm an estate agent. Poor bastard. Ian, good to see you, buddy. Are you well? Okay. Very well. Yeah, Very thanks well. so much for coming. Pleasure. Brilliant. Now, you love food. Mm -hmm. You love wine. I love wine. I enjoy it, and I like tasting wines from all around the yeah. world. And um, was it true that you actually named your dogs after wine? Is that right? <laughs> what are they yeah, called? Uh, well, we've got Pino, who's Pino. Jack Russell. We've got uh, Merlo, who's a bulldog. You must sound like some <laughs> pisshead in the park. <laughs> it is he now. You do get some, yeah, strange, no. get some strange look. Because you've got your own label now. Both yes. of them Merrill Willis. And the vineyard comes from originally? It's in McLaren Vale and Coonawarra, South right. Australia. OK, original French grape? These grapes go back, the mm -hmm. vines go back a long way, yeah. Yeah. I want to test the palate. All right, OK. Um, now yeah. I want to see what you are capable of. What am I um, doing? So this is the Cliff Richard Wine Challenge, OK? You're going to go through yeah. This is Last year, Cliff came on the F word and he did pretty appalling in this challenge, you know. <laughs> uh, the challenge for you now is to do better than he did, yes? We're going to present two wines. Which is a good wine and which is a celebrity plonk? My palate, I'll drink that. Uh-huh. 
Number one is Barry Manlow Chardonnay. <laughs> Bloody hell, ten pounds a bottle. <laughs> the second one, Ian, <laughs> it's my favourite. Bata Grand Cru, 1996, 106 pound a bottle. My favourite, and would you believe Cliff Richard's favourite as well? You right. don't like that? No, I wouldn't do that. I can't believe you and Barry Manlow share the same nose for fine wine. Fuck it, next, please. <laughs> huh? yeah. Thank you. Mmm, take your time. I think I prefer that one. You're taking this very seriously. I love that level of competitive. I think I, th I, think I prefer huh? that. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> that there is a very expensive Chateau Montrose, yeah? Chateau Sauvignon. £70, 1996. Do I get and and the first home? one was a Blanc on Madonna. Well, there you go. Yeah, at £20 a bottle. Yeah, well done. You're equal to set clip. All right. OK, JP, next wine, please. One of my favourites now. OK. Yes. Wine number one. OK. Loving. Which is the wine and which is the Blanc? Wine number two. I like that. I like you the like style. It's got the lurthy. Wine? Lurthy, it's well, and it's well made. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. no, I don't like that. No. Would you pay for that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that style of wine. No, I'd no. buy that. If you had a bunch of vegetarians round for dinner, would you serve that to them? <laughs> Put them in the garden. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd keep that one for myself. That one. Okay, good. Right, my man. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. It's yours. The one you like. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Uh, you've been practicing before you got here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you fuck watch, up. What's the other one? And this one here. <laughs> Fucking hell. And bad go. news for Cliff. Not only have yeah. you beaten him, but you don't like his wine either. Shocking. Mind you, nor do I. Shocking. It's shit. It's that I wouldn't even put in my fucking bolognese. Mm, that's huh? Right, it's official. Cliff Richards' wine is shocking, yes? <laughs> okay, buddy. Well done. See you later. Excellent. Pork was lovely, very smoky flavour. The stock was also very nice. And also, the courgette was very well done. It was extremely good. The pork was um, was really moist, not at all dry like it sometimes is. OK. All right. right, ladies, results of the main course, please. Quickly come over. So, Jackie, how many do you think I have to pay for the main course? 45, chef. 45. Good. Sarah? 42. I like that level of confidence. OK. The number of people that are willing to pay for the main course is... 33 out of 50. Oh. So why didn't the others pay? The 17 um, decided not to pay. What did they say? Too slow. Too slow. Yeah, yeah. And too pink. Too pink? Yeah. There were two tables that came back and they were pink. Yes. Yes. Chef. Damn. Now, do yourselves a favour. Yes, yes chef. chef. Go out on a high. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Chef. Next on the menu, I get behind Ooh. Buffalo in search for the perfect Ooh. mozzarella. Milk, Gordon, milk. Fucking hell. It's time for dessert. A mouth-watering cherry samosa. Dom Jolly's up to his old tricks in the recipe challenge. Oh, please. Hello! No, I don't know the F word! Welcome back to the F word. Now, time to beat Dom Jolly in the recipe challenge. And. No, he's not on the phone, he's in my kitchen. Yeah. Well, you're sweating already, my man. Yeah, I know. The rules are simple. You choose your favourite dish, OK? I have to try and match that and, of course, obviously beat it. Okay. The dish is from where? Uh, well, it's a kind of slight hybrid, but it's basically a Lebanese dish that my mum used to make. What's it called? Well, I made it up. It's called <laughs> it's called chicken kafra, because that's the village I grew up in in Lebanon. But it's okay. a kind of lemon garlic chicken thing in the oven. Right. With a Lebanese green bean salad. Good luck. Thank you. Yes. So Dom's doing a Lebanese-style chicken dish, and I'm doing something sort of slightly Moroccan. It's the most amazing breast of chicken, sautéed. We're going to do a really nice couscous, but finish with a ratatouille and apple, and then sauced with a really nice lemon olive oil. I'm Dom, you OK? Things. Yeah, I'm doing my Keith Floyd. Up, up, up to me. OK, first, we're going to steam the couscous. Salt, pepper, a little bit of vegetable stock, and then some olive oil. And then just gently, over a bambri, just steam the couscous. So what have you got in there, garlic? Uh, yeah, sort of crushed garlic. I'm just going to fry off some onions and garlic with a bit of sumac in olive oil, then brown the chicken, and then put it all in the oven for about 40 minutes. And you get, like, a really lemony, garlicky chicken, if it works. If it doesn't, it tastes horrible. Now, you're a natural with food. Uh, well, I grew up in Lebanon, so we had lots of Lebanese food, which is... I like Lebanese food because it's lots of different little dishes. Yeah. And it's kind of influenced from everywhere. What was it like growing up in Beirut? Uh, it was cool till I was about six, and then the Civil War started. Yeah. And then it was things like going to school here in England uh -huh. and bringing out my shrapnel collection and realising that I was the only one with one, you know, it's that kind <laughs> of thing. Yeah. So what you got in there, garlic? Uh, yeah, sort of crushed garlic uh -huh. thing. And this is sumac, which I really like. Oh, lovely. Which is a kind of Lebanese... Uh -huh. I'm not quite sure what it is, you can tell me, but it's very lemony. It's, 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 it seems it's like, to be... like a dried berry, you know, like a... It is a dried berry, yeah, is it? Yeah, dried berry, absolutely. And it's used a lot, sort of, instead of lemon. 
but I'm putting it in with some lemon to make it uber lemony. So people don't like lemon. They're a bit buggered on this one. Rumour has it you used to be a vegetarian, yes? Yeah. Do you not regret all those wasted years? Do yeah, you not, totally. Do you not feel guilty? You don't look like a vegetarian. Or no, a man, no. Or a man that has been a vegetarian. But I did. When I was younger, I was a very thin goth. So oh. I, was a, I was worse. I was a oh, goth. Oh, stop I was a goth around. vegetarian. I was. <laughs> and now, all I'm going to do is just colour the chicken breast. Um, I love that glass of wine. You know, you haven't put that down since you've been in. I know. I've never huh? done the bottle. It's great. Hilarious. And what are you doing with the beans? I basically just fry them off with garlic and onion, lots yep. of salt, and then put in a can of really thick tomato. Uh -huh. Go inside my pan here, I've got my red onion, aubergine and courgette. Like Quickly soaked it off with a little bit of cumin. And the cumin flavour is going to really sort of enhance the vegetables, and then we're going to mix that through the couscous. Chopped tomato, sweeten it up, a little bit of coriander. Can I put my thing in the oven? You ready for the chicken in the oven? Yeah. Yep. Right, I'm ready. OK. Yep. That's right. Best for that. Both Dom and my chicken go in the oven now. Okay. Then it comes out. Quite simple, Dom loses. Now it's time for dessert, cherry samosas. English cherries. Absolutely phenomenal. They're only here to the end of August, so take full advantage of them. Reassuringly expensive, worth every penny. We're going to make the most amazing fresh cherry samosa. Cast the sugar. Hot pan. As the sugar starts to turn into caramel, add the cherries. Roll them round. Lemon. Kirsch. Goes brilliantly well with the cherries and the caramel. Ah, whew, fucking hell. Flambe. And then just add a couple of tablespoons of water. Lemon. Mint. Leave them to cool down for five minutes, and then we'll wrap them in phyllo pastry. The most important thing about phyllo paste, never, ever make it. Always buy it. It's a very thin, stretched pastry and perfect for a samosa. We're going to cut the phyllo in half. A nice, long, rectangle shape. Clarified butter. Four or five cherries in the corner, clotted cream, and sit it on top. Fold. A little brush and just fold over and stick it down. Perfect. Hot pan, clarified butter. In she goes. 35, 40 seconds each side. Out, onto the plate of sugar. Roll. A little touch of cherry compote on the plate. Cherry samosas with clotted cream. Done. Let's go four yes, portions away. Let's yes, go. Sir. Yes, sir. Can I just ask a question? Me and Indian. Sure. Why are you putting fruit in a smoothie? Yeah, already it's meat and potato. Mm -hmm. My mom right. would yeah. not be impressed. I've never heard. Have you made a smoothie say... before? Yes. But so it's a fruit smoothie. I'm sure. Yes, chef. If you try this at home. Yes, yeah, chef. Your mum would love it. Good. Go. Leave it. Come on, ladies. Let's go. I'll dress the place. You cook the samosas. Let's go. Uh oh. Where are they, please? Fucking hell. All we're doing is shallow frying them. Come on. Okay. I thought we could cook samosas. If there's one person here can get this right, it should be you. Not cherry one, chef. Let's go, ladies, please. Yeah, 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 no yeah, one's yeah. helping me. Yeah? Yes, chef. Sorry, chef. Sorry, yeah, chef. Sarah, yes, chef. let's go. This would be nice yes, to end on a high. Yes, yeah? Chef. Come on. Yes, chef. Okay. Yes, chef. Go. Shovel nine. <laughs> Time for a new Scottish delicacy buffalo mozzarella. <laughs> I'm on my way to a buffalo farm in Fife hoping that we can make Scotland's first ever batch of fresh buffalo mozzarella cheese. Woo! As a nation, we now produce more mozzarella than Italy. Sadly, it's processed mozzarella, all from cow's milk, and nothing to do with buffalo's milk. So this, from a chef's point of view, is a very exciting journey. I'm going to meet Buffalo farmer Stephen Mitchell in Fife, who's got me out my sports car and into something more suited for herding beasts that weigh a ton. Mm. Stephen's been farming buffalo for meat for three years, but he's never made cheese until today. We need to round them up to milk them, but they don't all move without a fight. Oh! Get out of the water! Come on! Whoa, here they come! Let's go, buddy! Now we've rounded them up, we've Whoa. got to pick out the females with the biggest udders to milk. But I'm a bit distracted by the size of Stephen's bull. 
He's monstrous. What's his name? He's called Malky. Come on. I'm dying to jump on him, but I know he'll kick me off. He's flipped me off before. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, how do you stop him? Press Malky. the brake. Malky. Oh, shit. You better hope he doesn't try and jump a cow gut, Gordy. Eh? How do you turn him back round? Malky. Oh, sorry, hey. I think that one's in oh. season. Oh, shit, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. OK. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Good for you. I want that one. 660. You see her? Get in front of her. That way. Go, go, go. Stop her. Hey, 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 hey. Watch, she's going to beat you, Gordon. Get in front of her. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, sidestep. <laughs> Over the oh. gate, Dave. No, oh, cancel gate. Cancel gate. Can Gordon, get in front. Get in front. No. Oh, hey, hey. Fuck it. This one's a training for the marathon. Hup. Here she comes. Go, go, go. Shut the gate, shut the gate once she's through, Dave. Watch out, watch out. Well done. Woo. Fuck it now. <laughs> Good. No. I'm knackered already, and we've still got to milk the thing and make the cheese. I'm going to let you have a shot to yeah. see if we can get some of that milk out. When you're bent down there, though, you, you're maybe more worried about the, the kicking. I'd watch out for the shitting. Ready? Well, you're right below her bum. How do I stop her from getting further back? OK, she's not going to come back. She can't come back. OK. So, Ram. Oh. No, you're nervous, uh, Gordon. You're nervous. Yeah, no, I know. I'm fucking Relax. Yeah, this, Relax. This, this, this just close. go in there and be confident, you know? A tumble. <laughs> Look at the size of her. Oh, shit. On cue. Now she's pissing it. <laughs> fucking hell, got a combination of shit and piss. You're stimulating <laughs> the wrong organs. <laughs> You're just using one finger, watch, Gordon. Okay. Use, use, you know, so you're, you're, you're just squeeze, bringing it down, but not pulling. Hey, oh, hey! Milk, Gordon, milk! Okay. Finally, oh. just when I thought I got the hang of it, the milk came out in pints, right. all over me. Where's the, the dry cloth? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they behind you? Yeah, no, no, I just want this. It's all down my fucking neck. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to tell oh, you I've got another God. 80 to do, Gordon. We'll be here on day. Twice a day. Twice a day. I'm fucking glad to be out of there, I tell you. Once we've extracted the first bit of milk by hand, the machine does the rest, which keeps the milk squeaky clean for the cheese. That's amazing, that, you know. Huh? Well, they say the fresher, the better for the uh, old mozzarella makers. As this is going to be Scotland's first ever mozzarella, Stephen has called in experts, Horace and his son Mike, to give us a hand. Gentlemen, how are we? Well, well this is a first for me. I've never made a mozzarella right. ever before. So we're going to heat the milk up to what temperature? Well, we're going to heat it up to 42 degrees. Yep. OK, and about an hour. Then we're going to add the um, cultures. Straight into the pan? Into the pan, sir, please. Right, please. right. Look at that milk. Look at that. Yeah. The first stage is to heat up the milk and add the cultures. This starts the cheese making process. Mm -hmm. Just to mix it in with Just that mix one. that in. Yeah. Um, so we take it off the heat, leave that to cool down now. <coughs> After an hour, the water in the milk called the whey separates and is thrown away. The curd is left and is melted with boiling water to make mozzarella. Nothing processed. OK, good. We're now turning it from curd into mozzarella. Yeah. Pour it right in as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, so we're just mixing it together, melting it together. Oh, push it together, that's right, kneading it together. That's it, love. Look at that stretch Out. there. No, 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 leave it no. in again. OK. Now form it together. It really right. is like a giant piece of chewing gum. Huh? Yeah, chuck it in there. Beautiful. Wait. Should we make one each? Need the, all the, need the corners into the other side, really. That's the thing. Crack on with that. Up for your fingers. Push it up for your fingers now. That's the way. You've got it, Steve. You've got it. That's it. There we go. That's the first Scottish yeah. mozzarella ball. Look at that's that. It. That's, that's it. it. It's perfectly yeah. shiny. Yeah, he's got a bigger ball than he has. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. Yeah. Huh? I may have a bigger one, but yours is more perfectly round. Nice <laughs> Maturity, my man. Maturity. That's it. Stephen's asked some friends and family over, and I'm doing a barbecue to celebrate. Burgers with Hi. buffalo meat and Scotland's first ever buffalo mozzarella. I can't wait. The perfect burger. Except this time we use buffalo meat, yeah? Definitely. Yeah, yep. so far. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. Mix the buffalo mince with red onion, mustard, garlic, and a good splash of Worcester sauce and Tabasco. Well, I'll not make them too small a pedo if you make they'll get they'll get upset, yeah? Yeah, again, yours is bigger than mine. <laughs> when the burgers are nearly done, I'm gonna to top them off with mozzarella. But first, I'm gonna use it to make a delicious salad. Okay, here we go. That's beautiful. See how wet that is there, look. Milk's just oozing out yeah. of it. God, it's so creamy. Yeah. That's beautiful, that. I've got a really nice feeling about this. I think this is going to take off, you know. We'll just put them on there like that. Nice. 
And then with a big tomato, just get it sliced. Huh? Season with salt and pepper. It's all new root, extra virgin olive oil. We've got to colour the olive oil now when it hits the mozzarella. It's extraordinary. And I'm just going to chop the basil. And then I'll just sprinkle that over there. And then finally, the lemon juice just brings it together. This is the bit I've been waiting for. I swear to God. Right, have a little taste. Oh, my God. Oh. That's bloody tasty. That's good. Well done. Well done. And can I have a percentage of this, please? <laughs> huh? That is delicious. This is fantastic. Absolutely. I'm speechless, to be honest. Eh? Pressure's oh. on now. Pressure's on now here, Gordon. Here we go. Mm. Right, who would like a burger? Yeah. Don't be shy. Oh, Do not be shy. <laughs> Hold it with both hands. Look at that. Wow. And the trim is a mozzarella on top as well. Beautifully melted. Huh? What do you think, guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. First ever. Yeah, Scottish. Buffalo mozzarella. Well done, buddy. Cheers. Yes, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers friend. Cheers, cheers, friend. Cheers, yes. Unfortunately, my hands still smell of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Now, time to find out the results of the recipe challenge. Oh, please. Sorry. Hello! No, 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 F word! Ramsey! I'm just about to thrash him, oh. he's... That's my phone. Right, ready paid. to plate up? Yeah, sort of. Yes, are you ready? Right. Are you excited? Uh, no, I'm terrified. Are you nervous? No, I'm not nervous, but I'm uh? competitive, so I want to fucking win. Yeah? But you've got a bit of an advantage in that you're a top chef and I'm a squirrel. So... <laughs> did you actually taste yours? Yes, I did. Did you? It was delicious. I always like to see them together like that, look. I'd uh? eat that. I'm not too sure. You know I'd go for that. You see, that's too punty, yeah. I think. Mine's just decent peasant food. Uh, yeah, it looks like a fucking camel's hoof. Right, John Baptiste. Off you go, my man. Yep. Yes? Just let him know, yeah? Lemon chicken kefra with a soup saw of seed roll. Yes? Soup saw. Ali, depends on the seed roll. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hi. Okay, good. So, first dish. And the second one. Bon appétit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Ooh. It's very well cooked. I think the lemon's a little overpowering, but the couscous was Couscous was good, but the chicken's cooked well. It's uh, not dry, so that's yeah. all that. I like that. It's very succulent. It's very well cooked. Should we try the second one? Yeah, it's good to go. Love green beans. That's really nice. The chicken is, again, I, I think it's done really well. It's not as flavoursome as the yeah. couscous dish. Yeah, yeah. I preferred the flavours in the green bean chicken. Um, I think the chicken was a lot more succulent. Give me the good Gordon. news. Um, obviously, <clears throat> egg vegetarian, uh, Squirrel lover. Uh -huh. Can I just say I've had a bit of had a bottle of wine care. as well? <laughs> yeah. And what was the score? Uh, 3 2 2. Oh. 3 so, 2 2. Yeah, so qu quite close. No, 3 2 2. He's yeah. French. Oh, quite. Uh, well, at least he got two votes. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Okay. Excellent. And Come on then, quick. Okay. Okay. Come on. Done. No! We're done. Yes, dude! <laughs> oh, fuck it off, will you? Fuck it, mate! <laughs> yeah. Gordon, what can I say? What? You know what? Put in a bit more work, be fine. I'm really quite chuffed about that. Oh, we do be fair. Fuck off. Fuck off out my kitchen. All right, but it's been a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could say the same. Next on the menu, is it just desserts for the desperate housewives? The, uh, the amount of customers that are happy to pay five pound, I suppose, is. And there's tragic news from the Beckham's estate. I'm absolutely fucking gobsmacked, and it was definitely Charlotte. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, some shocking news about my lambs, and trust me, it's not for the faint hearted. My sheep have been at the Beckhams for just two weeks when their estate workers made a terrible discovery. Hi, Gordon, it's Clark. Got a bit of bad news for you, mate. I went over to check the sheep this morning and couldn't find one. So he's looked it's escaped. The field. Oh, no, he's looked on the field and he's found one, and he's, uh, he's dead, mate, I'm afraid. He's dead? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, not a lot left of it at all either. And unfortunately, we found that he's the female as well. Fucking hell. I'm absolutely fucking gobsmacked. And it was definitely Charlotte. Yes, yeah, definitely. Fuck, mate, would a dog do that, do you think? Well, we can just presume something of a bigger nature has obviously got a hold of it and killed it. Fucking hell, I can't believe it after just fucking seeing how happy they are. And yeah. Ask the vet to come down and just, you know, have a look. At least like that, we'll find out exactly how she was killed or eaten. Will do, I'll get back to you about it. Damn. Huh? Fucking hell. Bad news. Huh? 
Later that day, the boys called in vet Helen Lee yeah. and she rushed to the scene. I think you're going to be able to find out what's killed it. We can try. I think we'll have to take the carcass away to do a post-mortem. I asked Clark to put the rest of my flock in a safe place. They put them in the Beckham stable block where they could be locked up at night. Charlotte was born at May's Sheep Farm in Wales, so I called him to break the news and ask if he'd ever experienced anything like this before. I mentioned the town. I haven't even, you know, started to think of how I'm going to break that one to the kids. Does that happen up there? I'm afraid it's a part of farming. You've got to be, you've got to be used to things like that happening a bit. Uh, because it's not easy, but you've got to take the good and the bad, really. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But when you've got a flock of three, four hundred sheep, fine. But when you've got four, yeah, and one. So you've got to keep your head up and look after the, you know, keep going and look after the other. Just when I thought I'd had enough surprises, Victoria's father sent me a newspaper which deepened the mystery. This is recent. This is a piece in the local newspaper of a possible wild cat on the loose. I heard back from the vet. Worryingly, her autopsy couldn't rule out a big cat attack. So she sent the results to a specialist forensic scientist for a second opinion. With so many questions, I had to find out what so happened to Charlotte. So I returned to the Beckham's field. Yeah, and this is where you found her? The uh, police was here, entrails were sort of going around there, and then the actual rest of the body was pulled over to just outside that longer grass there. I invited Colin Elcombe, a big cat keeper at the local wildlife park, to join us to see if he could lend some insight. The only way we could find out what had killed Charlotte was to view some footage in detail. Nothing could have prepared me for this. God, I mean... The meat's been stripped off. Oh, it's been absolutely yeah. savage. I mean, absolutely. Would a dog do that? It's very extreme for a dog. Vet Helen Lee had received a second post-mortem report that morning. I've got the report from the um, pathologist at the Veterinary Laboratories Agency. She actually um, sought advice from a full-time forensic veterinary pathologist up really? at Edinburgh University. So yeah. it's going right to the top to try and get the answers for you. He confirmed that predation by a large cat cannot be excluded in this case, given the method of killing by dislocation of the neck and the removal of large portions of the body. Yeah, I mean, that's a very intense report. But it is, yeah. They're not ruling out a possible cat. Mm. There's lots of speculation about so-called big cats being around in Britain. Pumas, lynx, they're the possible cats that yeah. people claim to see a lot of. So, I mean, it's such a savage exactly. attack and yeah. stripped of the carcass. Hardly any flesh left. You're saying it's been um, strangled, yes. a bit of bite around the neck, and which is classic for a, for a cat kill. The meat was actually eaten off very, very neatly. That's what the pathologist commented on, which, which niggled on her mind, because a dog would normally sort of savage at it and break bones and yeah. tear at the flesh. Yeah. It's, it's certainly unusual. Yeah. Yeah. You can't rule out can't. the small possibility of one of these uh, feline cat. cats. I find this whole big cat story absolutely incredible. So I want to talk to the locals to see if they've spotted one big enough to kill Charlotte. There is a cat on the loose, yeah, definitely. I was um, a couple of miles away on an early morning run. Uh, I just saw this kind of black creature cat thing, uh, and it, it didn't trot, it kind of glided really? across the road. I was going home from work late, it was quite dark. Really? Great big muscular black thing in front of my car, frightened me to death. And it was the size of a dog, but it looked like a cat. And it was a sign, wasn't it, about four years ago, wasn't it, down the bank? It was big enough to sort of eat a lamb. Yeah, no doubt in my mind it could do something like that, an animal of that size. Mm. That was probably about three or four weeks ago. I'm convinced they're out there, and um, certainly there's one around the Hertfordshire area. I contacted the police, but they said there's not enough evidence, so therefore they're not going to be launching a full investigation. But personally, I'm so desperate to find out what really happened to Charlotte. It was actually a little bit uh, too sweet. The cherries and the mascarpone could be a little bit more evenly distributed inside. Sometimes the ends are a little bit dry, but on the whole, it's very, very nice and very tasty. Time for results for the desserts, yes. Jackie, how do you think you did? 50. 50, that's confident, you know that. Yeah. Okay. 50. The Samosa Queen. They're Heather, not the Indian way, but 50. Heather? 50. 50. 48. Sarah, 48. <laughs> the amount of customers that are happy to pay £5 for the Samosa is 46 out of 50. Yes! Well done. Yes! Well done, well done, well done, well done. <laughs> uh, you did it. That means a grand total of 109 out of 150. And unfortunately, you will not be coming back to Claridge's. The experience was fantastic, Dad. Gordon. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Fuck off and get yourselves a beer, yes? Yes, sir. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.
On the menu next week, I'm heading down the Dorset coast to go diving. It's one of my all-time favourite foods, scallops. Cheers. Cheers. Scallops away. I give two Olympic athletes a run for their money with my fast food. 15 stone, <laughs> nice 40 years of age, yeah? <laughs> so go easy on the old man, yes? <laughs> Shit! And I kick Moni Diner, Jonathan Ross, out of my restaurant and into Let's my go. kitchen. Oh, right, ladies, ladies yes, yes, egg mixture. Let's do one at a time and we'll do it together, yes? This is like being on the generation <laughs> game in my day. Yes, that's it. Tonight's brigade made those simple dishes look difficult. Believe me, they're easy. Thanks for watching. Good night. If you think you know anything about the Big Cat sightings, please get in touch.